Hello everyone, and welcome to another video. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about raster processing. And this is kind of the equivalent of geoprocessing when we were talking about vector datasets. We learned when we were working with the vector datasets that if we systematically manipulated the vector datasets in certain ways using certain tools, and we had this core vector toolset, we could come up with the answers to questions and the solutions to problems. Well, here we're talking about basically the equivalent in raster data theory. So by systematically manipulating rasters, we can solve problems and answer questions. Now notice that I'm just calling this raster processing, and I'm not using the term geoprocessing, and that's because, as I think I mentioned in an earlier video on geoprocessing, I'm a little bit old school in what I consider geoprocessing to be, and so to me geoprocessing is that systematic manipulation of attribute and geometry information in vector datasets. And here we are using rasters, and so I don't personally apply the term geoprocessing to what we're doing to rasters. Some people will, and that's fine, but instead I just use this more general term, just processing, raster processing, for the techniques that we are going to be learning about here. So just as we had the core GIS toolkit for GIS vector analysis, we want to take a look at what we can do with rasters. So what can you do with a raster? Well, the raster data model is very straightforward. Maps as numbers, grids of cells. And so as it happens, if I were compiling a toolkit of things that you can do with rasters, it would actually be smaller. Your, your, the core toolkit, the basic toolkit, would be smaller than it is with the vector data set. And there are lots and lots of tools that uh, most GIS software packages, like commercial software packages, will have uh, for raster processing. But when I break it down to this core, sort of the core toolkit for raster processing, it's much smaller because there's more power in uh, a more limited set of tools. And so I have what I call the big four, the big four tools that you need to know in raster processing. And it's possible even that these four tools that I'm going to give you could encompass everything that you can do with a raster. Maybe not everything you can do with a raster. I will go ahead and leave that a little bit open. But they may encompass everything that you can do with a raster. And if they don't, they at least encompass almost everything that you can do with a raster. And you will see why here in a moment. Okay, so what are the big four tools that you need to know in order to solve problems and answer questions with rasters? Well, the first thing that we can do with rasters is that we can geo-reference them. What can we do with rasters? We can geo-reference them. That is giving rasters position in space, in geographic space. We can geo-reference rasters. We're going to go over each one of these in much more detail. This is just the overview. We can geo-reference rasters. We can also reclassify rasters. Okay. Uh, reclassification is how we change the values of the cells in a raster in a systematic way. What else can we do with rasters? We can resample them. And resampling has to do with changing the spatial resolution of the rasters. We can change spatial resolution of the rasters. And finally, number four in our big four, we can do math with rasters. So this final one, doing math with rasters, is really uh, what gives me the ability to say that these four tools might be might encompass everything that you can do with a raster. This last item here, number four, doing math with rasters is so broad, it's going to encompass a tremendous amount. But because of uh, rasters being maps as numbers, grids of cells with values, I told you that if you like mathematics, if you think mathematically, if you can think through a problem in a mathematical way, then you'll really like rasters because you can do math with rasters rather easily, and then solve problems and answer questions mathematically. So let's take a look at all of these in more detail. The first thing that we can do to a raster is georeference it. We can georeference rasters, and georeferencing means to give the raster a geographic position. And this is a very good thing in geographic information systems. This is basically what allows the raster data model to work 
in uh, to work for us in geographic information systems. There are lots of different fields that use rasters. You can even think about medical imaging when you talk about taking a CT scan, all the different kinds of medical imaging procedures that they use, they also process rasters. They have techniques for raster processing because when they get that information back, they can manipulate it in certain ways to detect certain medical abnormalities or detect conditions or so forth. But they don't need to position those rasters geographically. They don't need to position them in space. But we do in geographic information systems. So we've got to give the rasters geographic position. And we can do that. And if we couldn't, well, then we wouldn't be using rasters in GIS. And we can actually very efficiently give a raster geographic position because actually we only need to give uh, the, or record inside the raster the position of one cell. So all we really have to do is give this raster right here, or this cell in this raster up here in the top left hand corner, geographic position, and then the computer can geographically position the rest of the raster. And that is because, you know, if you think about it, each one of these cells has a spatial resolution, right? Each one of these cells is the exact same uh, length and also, of course, it's the exact same height, right? Because that was one of our major characteristics of a raster. So if I know exactly where to put this cell, right? If I store the coordinates of this cell, the computer will know the number of cells that are in a row. One, two, three, four in this case. Five in this case. One, two, three, four, five in this case. So I'm laying out the raster five cells in a row, and then I've got so many cells that are going down because I have so many rows. So if I know exactly where to put this cell, and stored also in the raster is all these cells, and then it knows, oh, I've got five cells, it lays out the first one, and the second, third, fourth, and fifth, and then it goes to a new row and puts this cell right here, this distance down below it, and it goes through and lays out the entire raster in the uh, in, in in geographic space, just because it knows the position of this cell, the number of cells that are in a row, and then also the spatial resolution of the raster. And then this information in it's a little bit it may be a little bit different in different raster file types, but often this information is stored in the header information of the raster file itself. So I can, with one coordinate, really be able to position an entire raster. And this is much more efficient than, say, vector data theory. Take a look at this weird shaped polygon that I have over here. And if I need to specify the coordinates of this area, well, how do I do that? I need to position this in space. I'm going to have to store the coordinates of each one of these vertexes in this shape. And so I've got a whole bunch of coordinates to store here and uh, in order to create the shape. And the more complicated the shape that I get, of course, the more coordinates I have to store for every single vertex in that shape. And that's a lot of information to store. So comparatively, when we're doing georeferencing of rasters, we can store the information necessary to geoposition the raster much more efficiently from a technical standpoint then we can store all of the information necessary to specify the position of lines, polylines, polygons in vector data theory. So that's an advantage from a technical perspective. But at least the georeferencing the rasters at all is what allows us to use them in geographic information systems. We can also reclassify rasters. And the reclassification of a raster simply means to change the values of the cells in a systematic way. We may be in situations where that's exactly what we need to do. Let's take a look at this raster over here, which is one of our uh, land cover rasters. And we have it coded for water, grassland, and forest, just using ones, twos, and threes. Well, what if I would rather the values in that raster be something else. And there are reasons that we will get to later about why we may want to do this. So if I were to run this 
raster through a reclassification operation, then what you'll do is you'll fill out a, a table like this that has the old values in one column and then the new values, what you would like to reclassify the values to in the other column. So we've got old values and new values. And if I do that, I would uh, the computer would fill out the output raster so that it looks like this. I've got uh, 20s, 25s, and 7s now for water, grassland, and forest. So I think everything checks out there. I think I put everything together there correctly. So I've reclassified this raster so that uh, all of the water is seven instead of one, grassland's 20 instead of two, and forest is 25 instead of three. I can be as arbitrary about this as I would like. In this case, I've just changed the new values to 40s, 10s, and 81s, and have reclassified the raster. So if you need to systematically change the values of a raster, then your go-to tool should be reclassify. You need to perform a reclassification operation.